Welcome to the Cinch SPFL Scottish Football Roundup, bringing you all the goals and all the action from a busy weekend in the Cinch Championship, League One and League Two. On this week's show, on loan, Alex Samuel scores a hat trick as Cali cause an upset at Starks Park. Josh Cooper's second half hat trick grabs the headlines in Stirling's 5 0 win over Kelty Hearts. And Peter Head hand League 2 leader Stenhouse Muir their first league defeat since August. Wraith hoped to return to winning ways as they played host to Cali Thistle. The home side was the game's first chance when Lewis Vaughan was kept out by Mark Ridgers. Nathan Shaw has been one of Cali's brightest attacking outlets this season. He had the away side's first pop at goal from distance. The game's opening goal would take until 25 minutes to arrive. Josh Mullins' curling corner kick being nodded home by Jack Hamilton at the back post. The striker is in red-hot form. This his third goal in as many games. Cali quickly sought to find an equalising goal. Shaw laying one on for new signing Cami Kerr, who curled his shot onto the roof of the net. The away side's attacking endeavours would bear fruit in the 31st minute. Another new signing, Alex Samuel, levelling things up for the Highland side. A player on loan from local rivals Ross County, scoring goals is one way to quickly win supporters over. Samuel was at the focal point of almost every Cali attack at Starks Park. The Welshman doubling his tally just five minutes later with a brilliant finish from outside the area. A high quality finish from the on loan striker. And in the 40th minute, Samuel would complete his hat trick, a corner from the left being expertly directed into the far corner. The perfect start to life at a new club for the forward. Into the second half, Wraith pushed hard to turn things around. A smart pass from Zach Rudden playing Vaughan through in 52 minutes, with the attacker finding the net. Wraith's number 10 with his 11th league goal this term. The home side kept battling for a leveller late into the game. The best chance falling to Vaughan, who couldn't keep his first time effort down. A huge win for Cali, as Wraith slipped to their fourth straight loss in all competitions. Air United travel to Hampden Park with hopes of securing back-to-back -back league wins. Anton Dowds with the honest men's first sight of goal. The away side were on top in the early stages but struggled to find a clear way to goal. Ben Dempsey missing the mark with this volleyed effort. Sean Welsh is a player who will bring plenty of experience and know-how to Queen's Park's midfield. The Spiders' new signing shown a yellow card for this foul just outside the area. Jamie Murphy stepped up to the resulting free kick and drilled the ball low beyond Callum Ferry to make it 1-0 to the away side on 40 minutes. The experienced winger with his fifth league goal of the campaign. The second half saw the hosts push hard for a leveller. Welsh initially well kept out here, with Jack Turner firing wide on the follow-up. The Honest Men had chances to double their advantage in the second period. Dowds with a great run here, but the finish just flashing wide. Ruri Payton has made the transition from League One to Championship look seamless this season. He levelled things up in the 63rd minute with an excellent header. 16 goals in all competitions this season for the Red Hot forward. But Queen's Park's joy was relatively short-lived. The Spiders reduced to 10 men when Welsh saw red for a second bookable offence. And with a man advantage, Ayr battled to retake the lead. 74 minutes on the clock when Fraser Bryden's cross was nodded home by Mark McKenzie for 2-1. Mackenzie scoring for the second weekend running.
but despite being a man light, the hosts kept on attacking. Their best chance of an equaliser falling for Stuart McKinstry, who fired just wide. Ayr had an opportunity to make it three when Aidan McGeary pounced on a mistake in the Queen's Park defence, but the Irishman couldn't find the finish. Scott Brown starting life in the Ayr dugout with a big away win. Morton aimed to continue their upward trajectory at home to 10th place our Broth. The away side going close early on through striker Jay Bird. Our Broth midfielder Keegan Jacobs was booked on 25 minutes for this foul on Morton's Robbie Crawford. The home side's first real chance came from a corner kick. The ball eventually being scrambled away by the Arbroath defence after a nervy moment and our broth would be reduced to 10 men shortly after. Jacobs being shown a second yellow and subsequent red card for a foul on Cameron Blues. With a man advantage in the second half, Morton hunted down an opening goal. Ian Wilson just unable to keep this one below the crossbar. And the hosts would be given a big chance to take the lead on 63 minutes, when referee Duncan Williams awarded them a penalty kick for a foul in the area. Robbie Muirhead confidently stepped up and slammed the ball beyond Max Boric to open the scoring. With 14 in all competitions, Muirhead is enjoying one of his most prolific campaigns in front of goal. Having got themselves in front, Morton were able to double their lead shortly after. George Oakley staying composed to make it 2-0 in the 75th minute. An excellently timed run and an icy cool finish from the striker. and the hosts would be gifted another chance from the spot on 82 minutes when Crawford was filled in the box. Grant Gillespie stepped up this time round, but the outcome was the same. A confident finish, making it 3-0. The midfielder with just his second league goal of the season. Morton were relentless in attack and almost made it four late on, but Lewis McGrattan saw a goal-bound header well saved by Boric. Dougie Emery's side stretching their unbeaten run to 11 matches in all competitions. Airdrie welcomed Partick Thistle to Lanarkshire on Saturday. The Jags with most of the early attacking play as Tommy Adloy went close to making it 1-0. Adeloy was Thistle's main man in attack in the absence of Brian Graham. The striker with great work here, but pulling his shot just wide. Airdrie had chances of their own in the early going, a big one falling for Nikolai Todorov, who headed over the top. And in the 37th minute, the Diamonds would make the breakthrough. Thistle unable to deal with a corner kick, allowing Craig Watson to slot home from close range. The defender with his second goal against the Jags this season. But it wasn't long before the away side were back on level terms. Good played him the right on 41 minutes, with Adloy staying cool in the box to wrong foot Josh Ray and find the net. Excellent skill and composure on show from the on loan striker. The second half was one of fewer clear-cut opportunities. Adam Frizzell with an effort from range which missed the top corner. Airdrie probably had the better of the chances in the second period but couldn't find a decisive goal. The points shared at the Excelsior. League leaders Dundee United welcomed Dunfermline to Tanadice. Craig Sibyl with the first sight of goal for the hosts, with his shot easily saved by Dennis Mehmet. United were firmly on top in the first half, but unable to make the pressure count. Ross Graham nodding this one over the bar. The Pars went close to taking the lead before the break. Sam Fisher's well-struck shot being well kept out by a reflex save from Jack Walton. 
and the away side would go even closer to the opener in the second half. Craig Whiten seeing a shot crack off the outside of the post. Ben Summers continues to impress in midfield for the Pars. He had a crack from distance late into the game but couldn't find the mark. The home side would begin to purr in an attacking sense right at the death. Archie Mikasin denied a fine opening goal by a flying stop from Mehmet. Scott McMahon was next to go close following a corner kick. The left back shot whistling just over the top of Mehmet's crossbar. And United's best chance would come deep into added time. Great play to work their way into the box, but Dunfermline's defence stood firm. A goalless draw, seeing the spoil shared at Tannadice. Here's a look at the latest standings in the Cinch Championship after the weekend's football. Dundee United have a one-point advantage at the top with a game in hand over Wraith Rovers. Morton's consistency over the past two months has Doogie Emery side in the playoff places, while Air United are up to sixth place thanks to their away win at Hampden Park. The Wasps welcomed league leaders Falkirk to the Rex on Saturday. The home side going close to an early opener, but Stefan Skugel well kept out by Sam Long. Falkirk had a point to prove after last weekend's disappointing Scottish Cup exit. Aidan Nesbitt working an angle in the box here, but his shot well saved by PJ Morrison. In a competitive first half, Falkirk had more of the clear-cut chances. Tom Lang's header well snuffed out by Morrison in the Alloa net. Bobby Wales has returned to the Rex on loan from Kilmarnock. He almost continued his recent scoring run, but was denied by Long. The opening goal would arrive on the 25 minute mark. Neat play from Falkirk, sending Cal Morrison in behind, who fired home at the near post. The tricky winger scoring his 14th of the season in all competitions. Into the second half, and Falkirk began to move up through the gears. Morrison sending Calvin Miller in behind on 50 minutes, with the winger keeping cool to double the Bairns' lead. Miller and Morrison have been a nightmare for League One defences all season long. And from there, Falkirk would go from strength to strength. Liam Henderson adding a third goal from a free kick situation in the 63rd minute. Henderson getting his fourth goal in his last six games. The Bairns went close to a spectacular fourth through Nesbitt, who cracked the bar from range, with Brad Spencer denied on the rebound. Midfielder Dylan Tate came off the bench to make his first appearance for Falkirk on the 76 minute mark. He marked his debut with a goal just four minutes later. Tate combining with fellow new signing Ryan Shanley for a tidy fourth goal. And the scoring was complete on 89 minutes. Alfredo Aguiman's clipped cross allowing Shanley to smash home his first goal for the club. A five-star performance from John McGlynn's side on the road. Sterling welcomed Kelty to fourth bank on a chilly afternoon. The Beano's first chance of the match falling for Jack Leach, who couldn't provide the finishing touch. Kelty's first real chance would come to young forward Alfie Bavage, who was unable to really test Blair Curry in the Sterling net. It would take until the 44th minute for the first goal to come. Jordan McGregor heading Sterling into the lead from a corner kick. An excellent looping header which crept into the top corner. The second half saw the Beano's start much like they ended the first. 53 minutes on the clock when Dale Carrick made it 2-0 to the hosts. A neat pass from Dale Hilson, setting up a top finish from Carrick. And in the 72nd minute, Sterling would make it 3-0. Josh Cooper coming off the bench to slot home his side's third of the game. 
Quick play down the left, with Cooper staying cool in the box. Sterling played some free-flowing football in this one. Another brilliant move down the left on 80 minutes, allowing Cooper to add his second and Sterling's fourth. The Beatles showing their very best levels in an impressive second half display. And the hosts weren't quite done yet, leaving their very best to last. More excellent build-up and precise passing, with Cooper yet again being in the right place at the right time to complete his hat-trick off the bench. Cooper grabbing the headlines and a marvellous home display from the Beatles. The Galabankis played hosts to 10th placed Edinburgh City on Saturday afternoon. Willie Gibson denied a spectacular opening goal by the top of the crossbar. Annan piled on the pressure in the first half. Tommy Muir seeing a header flash narrowly over the top of the city net. But the hosts didn't have to wait too long to open the scoring. Aidan Smith finishing low into the bottom corner on 29 minutes to make it 1-0. Powerful finish from one of Annan's top attacking talents. Chances kept on coming for the home side. Gibson putting this one just over the top after some neat footwork. Dominic Doherty was the next to go close for Annan. The midfielder firing past the post from this corner kick situation. Edinburgh City have plenty of exciting young talents in their ranks. On loan Hibsman Malik Zaid denied an excellent equaliser by a flying save from Jack Herity. Annan pressed hard to double their lead after the break. Benjamin Lussant making his way into the city box on 49 minutes and making it 2-0. The Frenchman on target for the first time since late July. And Annan had a big chance to make it three. The hosts were awarded a penalty kick on 63 minutes for a foul on Smith. Annan though were unable to convert. Tommy Goss well kept out by City stopper Ruri Adams. But from the resulting corner, Goss would get his goal. The powerful striker finding the net to make it 3-0. The striker with goals in back-to-back -back league appearances. City kept battling late on for a way back into the match, but couldn't get a foothold. 3-0 Annan the final score. Queen's aim to pick up their first win of 2024 away to Cove Rangers. The away side taking the lead on 13 minutes, with Jack Bryden getting the decisive touch. The perfect start for Marvin Bartley's side in Aberdeen. Queens look bright going forward early on. Kyle Doherty seeing this strike flash wide of the post. Doherty was at the focal point of many of Queens attacks. The striker excellently stopped by Cove keeper Nick Suman here. The home side began to look more like themselves in the second half. Ramar Burrell with a big chance here, but unable to find a way past substitute goalkeeper Gordon Bottrell. Cove thought they had levelled things up from this free kick. Kyle Connell's strike hitting the post, with Cameron Stewart poking home on the follow-up. But celebrations were curtailed by the assistant referee's flag and Queen's would go on to punish Cove's missed opportunities. A quick breakaway on 65 minutes, with Doherty's brilliant finish making it 2-0. An excellently executed counter-attack from the away side. Cove struggled to find a clear path to goal late into the game. Mark Reynolds trying his luck from distance here. And Kyle McClelland had a chance to make it three for Queens late on, but diverted his header well wide of the mark. A big away win for Marvin Bartley's men.
Aki's aim to make it three league wins in a row at home to Montrose. Kevin O'Hara going close early on for the hosts, but well kept out by Cami Gill. But O'Hara wouldn't take too long to get his goal. 16 minutes on the clock when the informed striker scored an excellent opening goal. O'Hara scoring for the fourth game running for Aki's. New signing Jake Hasty could well become a key player for Aki's over the next few months, but he was unable to open his account for the club here. Into the second half and Montrose began to look livelier in attack. A great chance falling for Matthias Machado, who sliced it wide. The home side kept battling to find a second goal, but struggled to do so. Ewan Henderson being kept out by Gill at the near post here. And late into the game, Montrose would find an all-important equaliser. Luke Graham pouncing in the area in the 84th minute to level things up. Great fighting spirit shown from Montrose to salvage an excellent point on the road. Now to check in on the latest standings in Cinch League 1. Falkirk are 11 points clear at the top of the table, thanks to their big away win at the Rex. Montrose's late goal at Hamilton sees the Gable Endies keep hold of 4th place, while Stirling are now just 2 points off the playoff places after their huge win over Kelty. It was 2nd versus 1st in Cinch League 2 on Saturday afternoon. League leader Stenhouse Muir going close to taking an early lead through Gregor Buchanan. Peter Head's first big opportunity would come to Danny Strachan, who made his way into the area and fired just wide. But the Blue Toon kept on pushing and made the breakthrough on the half hour mark. An excellent Hamish Ritchie header making it 1 0 to the home side. An excellent cross from Strachan and a top header from Ritchie. But Peterhead's lead would only last four minutes. Steny hitting back with a quick reply through a smart header from Buchanan. The Warriors skipper notching his sixth of the season. Peterhead came flying out the traps in the second period. Connor O'Keefe denied by Darren Jameson, with Kieran Shanks missing the second attempt. The home side's good attacking play would be rewarded 15 minutes from the end. Ritchie tucking away his second of the game to restore the one goal lead. An excellent first time finish from the talented attacker. Steny threw everyone forward late on in search of a leveller but couldn't penetrate the Peterhead backline. The Blue Toon handing the league leaders only their second league defeat of the season. Guys down there, it's Easton and... Oh, it's not happy the refs, saying take your time. And Dolan just couldn't get enough in it to just cut out. Now... Oof! Oh, it's oh, the post! post. <laughs> wow. No one. Dylan Forrest as yeah, well. just got a little bit to it. He's offside. Well, nothing coming for the linesman. Oh, look well offside. And I thought he was going to have a, a go from distance, he is. No, it's over the bar, though. Bar. No, Dean much. Oh, I thought Matty was... Again, looking for Austin. Oh, oh keeper, the... keeper thought about it. It's a good chance. Oh. Trying to go round him. It's over, yep. Uh, again, it's a switching offside, but... He, he gets away with it. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I've, I've been seeing this. That's what they play. That, that's what they play yep. on. Oh, brilliant for Forrest. It's well done. Yep. Now Craig Chance to go it. again. Oh, it is too much, is it? Still, the pressure's on. Oh. Oh. Got shot away, spilled by the keeper. Yep. Austin wins a bit. Dylan Forrest did really well. And he's looking for the run of Tom Moore. Oh, oh, chance. Uh, what a chance. Oh, oh, Tom. If it's not the uh, final ball, anyway, it's the, yeah. the ball beforehand. Yeah. 
No chance for him to burst Kyle. through here. Yeah. He's oh, done that, well. That was poor for Stamara, got you yeah, say. Just if anything, he's five. Uh, good, keep, good save for the Budenakis. That's probably one of the second shot on target in this half. Saturday afternoon saw Elgin City welcome Dumbarton to Borough Briggs. On loan forward Deshaun Golding looking threatening early on. Michael Ruth has been one of the Sun's standout players this season. The striker being well kept out by Tom McHale in the Elgin net here. The home side's next big opportunity would come for Michael Dangana, who went close to picking out the far corner of Jay Hogarth's net. Calvin Orsi is one of the division's trickiest wingers. He weaved his way through and laid one on for Ruth, but again the striker was denied. But Dumbarton would eventually make the breakthrough. Tony Wallace reacting quickest in the box in first half stoppage time to open the scoring. 11 goals in all competitions, Wallace is having an excellent season in front of goal. Suns kept pushing for more in the second half. Ryan Blair's well taken free kick kept out by a flying McHale save. Ruth continued to look lively throughout. A great run from the forward, but again he couldn't provide the finishing touch. There were chances for Elgin to equalise late on, but the black and whites just couldn't find the net. A battling victory for Stevie Farrell's sons. Clyde travelled to the capital aiming for their first away win of the campaign. On loan, Jordan Allen almost marked his return to the club with a quick-fire goal, but was kept out by Blair Carswell. But it wasn't long before Allen was threatening again. Four minutes on the clock when the pacey forward beat the offside trap and found the net. The perfect return to the Bully Wee for the on loan Falkirk forward. Reese Armstrong is a player who has impressed since making the step up from the Lowland League. He holds Spartans back on level terms in the 24th minute. A brilliant first time finish from the attacking midfielder. Clyde though had the best chances in the first 45. Ross Lyon denied by a vital last ditch tackle from Kevin Waugh. The second half started in a similar vein for Clyde. Liam Scullion with an excellent strike, which clipped the top of the crossbar. Ian McCall's side relentlessly applied pressure to the Spartans' backline, but couldn't find a second goal. Towards the end of the game, the hosts would start to create more in front of goal. Blair Henderson nodding this one narrowly wide. and Henderson would get one last chance right at the death, a chance which he again headed wide. The point shared at Ainsley Park. Forfer and Bonnyreg faced off in Angus on Saturday afternoon. Lee Curry with an early chance for the Rose, which flew just over the top. An early sight of goal for the hosts would come to Stuart Morrison, who put his first time effort just by the post. It was fairly end to end, but neither side could find the net early on. Bradley Barrett's shot well held by Mark McCallum here. The second half saw Forfer push hard for an opener. Russell McLean with a strike, which was excellently beaten away by Paddy Martin. Martin was relatively busy in the second half the keeper making another top stop to keep out Morrison here. Bonnyrigg's best chance of the second half came to Callum Connolly, but the midfielder couldn't hit the target from outside the area. It finished goalless in Angus. Now to check in on the latest standings in the Singe League 2 table. Peter Head's win at Balmour reduces Stenhouse Muir's lead at the top to 13 points. East Fife's away win at Stair Park has the Fifers up in 5th place. 
and Clyde are now just four points behind ninth place Elgin City after an important away point at Spartans.